because he wasn't pre-registered and we had no Italian members. And suddenly Roberto Qualia is trying to the door. <laughs> Oops, I need an Italian flag. Yes. <laughs>
auch Ausdruck in Journalisten. In Journalisten, ja, siehst du. Das, äh, wenn man eine, eine gute Story hat. Ja. Man, äh, das ist ein Das ist ein Das ist ein Das ist ein It 
must be very tough to laugh. And he said, let's find out. <laughs> Sehr leicht zu merken, Kuba-Krise 62, Apollo 13, 70, Pearl Harbor 41 und Mondlandung 69. Yeah. 
Because Stanley uh, was a little bit of a hermit, uh, his movies were um, mostly made uh, in England, uh, with little trips over to Ireland uh, by surface travel. Uh, for instance, when uh, filmed in the East End of London, first of all, uh, Stanley bought uh, a plastic Vietnamese jungle uh, from California and had it flown in. Uh, palm trees uh, brought in from Spain. And they were all put up in this um, gasworks jacket. Well, it's partly because it was all filmed in England. Uh, he had uh, Jack Nicholson cross the road uh, 58 times. Uh, th this was, he told me, in the hope that something interesting would happen. <laughs> <coughs> and this is done. And the phone rings. And um, Stanley says, hello, this is Stanley Kubrick. I want you to walk to the window and come back and tell me what you can see. <laughs> Stanley listened and put the phone down, and he said, that's the trouble with uh, positive discrimination, they employ retards. Uh, so instead, uh, uh, Tony was told to phone the New York officers of Warner Brothers. A photographer should be sent instantly uh, to Macy's department store to take photographs of everything surrounding it, and these were to be sent by special courier air to us for the next day. And this happened. And uh, next day when I walked in, there were the photographs of everything you can see outside of Macy's. But of course, by then we had lost interest. So we looked at them for 15 seconds, and two months later they were still in the same position on the table. gemütlich mit seinem Aufzug allein Was ist denn nun Which 
is sighted just roughly north of the equator, is actually a very important um, uh, ice cap and is, and is known as, as, a, as an indicator, as a, what we call a Melanchthon indicator. <coughs> now, Melanchthon was this, I think it's checked at the back in mathematician. This is all very European. Notice that the Americans, when they get mentioned in this talk, do not get very good mention from lots of European scientists. Uh, yeah, or the request not to smoke anywhere in this building. I was told that the program was going to run out of smoke. Really? Yes. Um, and when I'm on purpose, but I don't, I don't smoke. Is that uh, the moon does not the moon, the, the Earth and the moon orbit about the sun. The Earth's orbit about the sun is not to an eclipse. The deviation from being a true circle to being uh, an eclipse like this varies from a period of some 93,000 years. The uh, consequence is that if the northern hemisphere happens to have the summer when it's further away, uh, it will have a different effect on the amount of snow and ice remaining at the end of the summer com compared to when the uh, uh, eclipse, where the, the eclipse is such that the Earth is closer to the sun in the summer period. So the variation of eccentricity is a cycle that, that appears every uh, 93,000 years. The angle of tilt also varies with a period of some 41,000 years. As we discovered uh, this morning, the situation is that um, the Earth's moon, like we're doing type for a uh, balance, uh, the Earth's moon for a fashion, but I'm also a science fiction fan. In fact, because I was interested in science fiction, I became a scientist. And uh, uh, I, I look around in the academic literature for um, uh, interesting articles, and there are a number of scientists who are, are science fiction inclined. But you have to be very careful being a scientist, because if you, uh, because he's a science fiction person, you know, and it sort of has bad things in your career. But if you look very, very, very carefully in the academic literature uh, over the course of a year, you find one or two articles uh, relating to very interesting topics, such as the possibility of, of, of life elsewhere. And um, this is what I've been doing for the past few years. In fact, I've been giving this talk in upgraded forms for about 15 years now, and it has changed quite a bit since I first um, uh, began. The moon must have life, because if there wasn't life there, there'd be no reason to have the moon. Um, it's an odd way of thinking, but nonetheless it does show that way, way back, uh, people have been considering that there have been life on, on other worlds. And of course, don't forget, in my earlier talk, I pointed out that one Greek philosopher, whose name is, is it sounds a bit like a Greek restaurant, and I can't pronounce it very well. Uh, but in the 5th century BC, uh, he noted that when the Earth eclipsed the moon, as opposed to moon, sorry, when the Earth eclipsed the sun, as opposed to moon eclipsing the sun, you could see the Earth's the curvature of the Earth's shadow on the moon, and this was evidence that the Earth um, was round. So for, for, for centuries before Christ, uh, the, the thought, at least among some people, that there was life elsewhere was abounding. Now, of course, in the Victorian times, uh, and uh, uh, more recently with H.G. Wells, the world, world, so forth. People have thought there was life on Mars, and uh, uh, old uh, Giovanni Schiapelli in 1877 uh, was the first person, he was Italian by the way, he was well, not, not a radio symmetry, so, a sort of a radio symmetry. Um, uh, it's the starfish, not radio symmetry, that's a good example. Um, but they also have bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is very, very common, and the reason is, is that when your, your cell Fertilizes, you're fertilizing, you have a wall of cells. It's very, very easy for to have a chemical gradient going away from one point to either side, and you can get specialization. It's a very, very simple trick. And therefore, in biology, bilateral symmetry, even if it's complicated up with things like radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry is, is quite fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the preparations are well advanced in, into the next year, and I designed the uh, intention list, a sort of first um, sketch of contract with the uh, City Council of Virginia, which is, well, as you probably know, there's three cities close to each other, the so-called three city, Virginia, Gdansk, and Sopot, which is rather a small resort. And um, well, Virginia is very interested in, in, in helping the European Convention along. Uh, so they are slightly afraid of, about the number of 
attendees expected because it will be all the biggest conference for quite a, for quite a long, long time. this year, Ireland, Poland, Germany, Italy, and Poland, Poland, oh well. Um, <laughs> come on in and sit down. <laughs> the, the first of these awards <laughs> is for Best author, in German tradition, the prize this time is a book. Um, the best author this year is James White from Ireland. Um, I would like to ask Paul Dormer to come to collect the prize for Jim White. is indeed British, as people may realise, and not Irish. I tried to get the Irishman, I don't know where he's got to. I do know Jim from way back, and I'm, I'm sure I'd be really pleased about this, and uh, he's, a, he's a very nice guy, and uh, but he's not here, but... Uh... Okay, thanks. The, the, the next um, award is for Best Artist. Um, this is to Stislav Bechinski. Um, I would like to ask Piotr Haleva from Poland to take the award for him. Um, could I please have um, somebody, the next prize is the prize for best publisher. This was a draw, therefore there will be a prize awarded both to Alpito One of Ireland and to the publisher Weitbrecht from Germany. Could you please come to accept the prize for um, Weitbrecht for Germany? Congratulations Germany. The best publisher was for the publication, the books published by the Irish publisher, 
Albedo 1. Could I please ask Paul Dorman to come again? <laughs> You know, this is all a continuation of Bridget's joke from two years ago in Ireland, where she got the Albedo team up on stage three times in a row in five minutes. So. People may recognise this. This is for an Irish publisher. I will hold it up and show it to the Germans in the group. It is, it's the lexicon from the other winner. <laughs> Next is for Best Journal. For the first time ever, the Best Journal has been won not by a paper magazine, but by a, web, by a website, by an internet magazine. The internet magazine concerned is the site Delos, www.delos.it. And I would like to ask Roberto Pallia, who is already moving, <laughs> to come and collect this prize. www.fatascienza.com slash delos I cannot say you every every letter because uh, it would take until tomorrow <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> The next prize is for best promoter this is somebody who has uh, encouraged um, science fiction fandom and interest in science fiction. This year, this has been won by Ella Gepfert, Elzbieta Gepfert, from Poland. I would like to ask her husband, Piotr Polova, to come and collect the prize. <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> Arek Nakonechnik. Could Marek please come and collect this prize? quite a lot of you in Poland, in Gdansk, sorry, Gdynia, next year. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. The, the joke about Terry Gatcher, if you know, is everything.
everything in there is every day in his life, but translated into the discord. That means British, but never mind. You mean British, but never mind. I didn't mean it. It's very generous. I'm teasing it. I'm teasing it. I'm teasing it. Things like things like the... It was not enough. Maybe in five years I get them out. So your books, absolutely wonderful. Show them to everybody in the office. Everybody in the office absolutely fell off their chair laughing. We all thought they were wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, the penny dropped, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. We do have to be a master. No. We do have to be a master. 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 Was it Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people feel the eyeballs from slightly on the outside because I have drifted in the past seven years outside of mainstream British fandom. The way outside the feeling I got was that um, the average British fandom said, oh my god, we've got a war time, we better get on and do our bit. And so it was happening and we're, and we're like forced into it. Uh, having said that, they had a good time and it was a nice adventure. I'm not going on the discussion at all. And that, that was the feeling I had. I, I tell you what I also feel about British fandom, which really sad to me. When we had the Jersey um, uh, Convention, a group of us from Northwest Kent Society, we did a very, very simple thing. We took out an East Pier for a meal each night, a different one. Each one had their treats, that was it. But that one person went back and said, hey, that's a really nice British English folk. And, um, then we had others during the day who up and talk to us and be introduced. And we took a different person out. And by the end, 
when the Romanians were going back on their coaches, they dragged myself and Roberto out and photographed us as part of the, the entourage with some of the others. But we made, we made genuine friendships, we really did, which have lasted. And we've done things and built upon it, and done the Anglo Romanian exchange, we've done the BBC World Service and, and so forth. And I think that has had, had, had probably as much, if, if damn sight, more effect than uh, Craig Charles coming around on the Craig's Pingwijig or from Red Dwarf. Yeah, no, I did uh, the press day as well for 1984, and I got a half hour program, Kaleidoscope, devoted to the 84 Easter Con. And I can tell you that. I've yet to hear the maximum of the international against media media from that. We, we, we can tell you a long story of how we ended up going down. You know, a few things that seem to be like this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mineral water. Oh, water. Yeah. Two mineral water. Well, if you don't want to meet you, the world of the world, 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 the world of the the world, and we're going to talk about our world just becoming Frankenstein, etc, etc, etc. We have on our panel this, this and this, and we also have so so, which includes maybe Brian Aldous and some other big author. We've got such a big potential thing. And have the questions flying around. That would go down a real treat. Melvin Bracker, that would be up for it. No problem. Are there are things like that just off of the head. And that, I that's, think that's, that's, that's something that's like that. Um, when I approached the uh, World Con, and I did a business plan, a business plan, and I said I was so confident. Well, you know why I did the business plan. And I put my own, I put my own money up. I didn't get the numbers. And for certain amounts, then I'd get the first membership fee, yeah, and that would finance the whole thing. And I, was, I knew I could deliver it, and I was prepared to put my money where my mouth was. Well, one of the things that happens <laughs> in, in things like World Comms is there's just so much going on that a lot of those ideas just don't get the support. Uh, what kind of, no, no, I think no, we, have, we have to give them, uh, in fact, I think this was at stage where we were support. Way, way before, right? this was 1989 or something. Yeah. The honest answer is, from my point of view, that yeah, we were as we young as we were experienced to know how to deal with you. <laughs> We were too young and experienced. What do you think now? Well, yeah, you're right. It's okay, it's not a problem. And this is Craig Charles, a bloody. Bloody Scotties. Yeah, but this is. 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 Yeah, but this is